Welcome to the Mason & Associates YouTube channel. I'm John Mason, President and Certified Financial Planner at Mason & Associates. Thank you for being on this journey with us. Today, in this episode, we're talking don't let the government control your tax plan. What do we mean by that? Well, first, let's just acknowledge the fact that like losing control never feels great. Like we don't want to lose control of our car, we don't want to lose control of our destiny, and we certainly don't want to lose control of our tax plan. But unfortunately, many people are doing that. Many people by default, and I'm sp talking specifically to you, the federal employee, you are losing control of your tax plan and you think you're doing a good thing by, by the strategy that you've employed. So let's, let's talk about a few things here. So one, this is not meant to be political, so I wanna caveat that immediately. We don't wanna let the government control your tax plan, not political. Required minimum distributions. I think you'll maybe see, before this video goes live, Tommy Blackburn talking about those. RMDs, or required minimum distributions, essentially say at somewhere between 73 and 75, you're going to have to start taking required minimum distributions out of your pre-tax IRAs, TSPs, and 401ks. Why does this exist? Well, it exists because you never paid tax on that money, you deferred tax on that money for decades, and now Uncle Sam wants his cut, right? So required minimum distributions basically say, you have to take this money out, you have to pay tax, and you have to do something with it, get it out of the tax preferred account. So I did some quick math. At age 73, your life expectancy is 26 and a half years, your joint life expectancy. If you wanna fact check me on this stuff, there are multiple different RMD tables. So there's a single life expectancy table for inherited accounts, there's a joint life expectancy for um, most people who are pulling out IRAs, but there's also another table for if your spouse is 10 years or younger, more younger than you, 10 years, or greater, younger than you, if that makes sense, um, if they're way young, then there's a different table for that too. So at a million dollars divided by 26.5, which is your joint life expectancy, your required minimum distribution is like $37,000. So what can we do with that? Well, we can spend it, we can donate it to charity, we can reinvest it in an after-tax brokerage account. So that's a whole separate, what do we do with it when we get there philosophy. So we've talked about RMDs. How does this blow up your tax plan? Well, after 13 years of doing this, and after over three or four decades of doing this at Mason & Associates, we can kind of communicate to you that financial plans and retirement income for federal employees tends to look like this. You make more money in retirement than you do while you're working. And, and if you haven't understood that concept, you probably wanna listen to our videos on modified current income and tune into the podcast but you're going to make most of you more money in retirement than you do while you're working. Why is that important? Folks, when you retire at MRA or 60 or 62, which is frankly young, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna activate your pension, you're gonna activate your supplement, maybe you activate a social security benefit, maybe you have a military pension, and here's what happens. We have a million dollars or whatever we have in our thrift savings plan and investments, and we don't spend it. We don't spend it because we think it's a prudent thing to do. We don't spend it because the government hasn't told us I have to get that money out yet. And what ends up happening from 60 to 73 years old? Well, your million dollars hypothetically doubled to $2 million, which means your required minimum distribution, folks, just went from like 37,000 to almost $80,000 a year. The government's gonna force out at some arbitrary future tax rate. We have no idea. We have no clue what that tax rate's gonna be 10, 15, 20 years from now. But what we do know is if you just let compound interest do its thing, there's a very real chance that your required minimum distribution is going to double or maybe even 3X before you start taking those withdrawals. Why is that a problem? Well, let's layer in the social security. Let's layer in the first, folks, this could push you into another tax bracket. This higher required minimum distribution could make you ineligible um, for things like if you were working, contributing to a Roth. It could make you ineligible for things like, um, or make you have to pay higher premiums for your Medicare Part B or Part D drug plan. There are so many negatives that can come from losing control of that tax plan. 
that, and now it's like, what do we do with it? So not only did we lose control and we've got this forced distribution, then we have to put it somewhere. Then we put it in an after-tax brokerage account, which does what? Every time we generate dividends and capital gains, we pay? You heard it, taxes again. Well, what if we take ownership of our tax plan today? What if we know this is gonna happen and we don't want it to be that way? How do we smooth out that ride? Well, we can do that a number of ways. Number one, I'd love for you to spend your money. I'd love for you to say, you know what? Three, four, or 5% withdrawal is pretty reasonable and there's African safaris and there's things that I wanna do and I'm not gonna wait till 73, I'm gonna do that today. So one way we can bring some of this tax forward is for you to use the money in the way that it was originally intended for you to do things that you've never done before, for you to have more fun than you've ever had before. Folks, a Dave Ramsey quote out there that I really like is, live like nobody else today so you can live and give like nobody else tomorrow. You've earned the right for this. You've earned the right to spend your money, so go do it, have some fun. If you're not gonna do that, we haven't convinced you that you should do that, maybe Roth conversions make sense. Maybe bringing some of that forward getting it deposited into a Roth, maybe that's in your future. But all of this to be said, you should have a comprehensive financial plan and you should be working with a coach or a team that can help you understand the magnitude of these decisions that you're making. Um, we don't want you to lose control of your tax plan. It doesn't feel good to lose control of anything. And folks, remember this, the tax law is not necessarily designed to help you. Tax law is designed to incentivize behavior. The reason there's tax credits on electric vehicles is so people go buy electric vehicles. The reason the mortgage interest deduction was there was so that people would go buy houses. I'm not necessarily sure all of the reasons why RMDH was pushed back, and, and we could speculate on this channel forever, but them pushing it back doesn't mean you should push back your investment distribution strategy. Folks, we're Mason and Associates. Remember, things are what they seem. We're here to support, empower, educate, and motivate you to make changes in your financial plan. If you like this content, if you think it would be helpful to, to somebody else just like you, introduce us. Who could benefit from this federal employee knowledge? Who could benefit from our comprehensive review on all things financial planning? Think of that person, introduce them to the channel, and please interact, like, subscribe, um, hit that bell notification, and we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. We'll see you next time.